And welcome to Thornton Academy of Football on TATV. As we're taping on September 15th, 2017, the Thornton Academy Golden Trojans football team has made the short trip to Scarborough to take on the Red Storm. Jim Toomey along with our color man, Calvin Cristoforo, on the camera, Dylan Paulette, general manager of TATV, Jeff Christenberry, on site as well, taking extra pictures. Both teams coming in 2-0 on the season, Calvin. Scarborough defeated Deering 48 to nothing and Scar uh, Sanford 49 to 15. The Trojans defeated Massabesic 46 to six and Deering 55-12. And as we look at these two teams, uh, Scarborough with more veterans coming back this year. We know they split last year, Thornton winning here during the regular season and then the Red Storm winning in the playoffs. Yeah, definitely some familiar faces from the Scarborough team. Starts right up front with the quarterback, Zoltan Pagny, and of course, Owen Garrard, the excellent running back for this Storm team. TA comes in with a younger team, sophomore quarterback, a lot of junior skill players, so it's going to be a very interesting matchup tonight. Again, as we said, both teams had fairly easily victories in their uh, two games. Schedule's on a quirky in the sense it's the second year in a row in the regular season we've been at this field and looking to see who's winning the coin toss. Scarborough's going to be receiving. Last year during the regular season, Thornton won on this field 34 19. But in the playoffs, the Red Storm at Hill Stadium defeated. Thornton by a score of 36-29. That was a shootout, and you sort of felt that game last year in the playoffs, Calvin, that whoever had the ball last would probably win almost. It almost came down that way. Definitely. Great display of offense showing in that one, and that was the first time Scarborough has defeated T.A., so let's see if T.A. can back, get back to the winning ways in this matchup. One of the few times in recent years you check the various media polls that Thornton is not favored in a game, but I'm sure Coach Kevin Kiesel and his staff have taken that as a positive. And going to have our national anthem from Kippy Mitchell Complex in Scarborough, the campus of Scarborough High School. It's going to be Thornton kicking right to left. Thornton in their white uniforms. Scarborough in their black, trimmed with a red. It'd be Brady Forbes, sophomore kicker, to start the action. And Scarborough has a very dangerous uh, return man and a, a track man, very successfully. Tell us about that, Calvin. No doubt, TA has given up a kickoff return touchdown in each of their games, and it does not get any easier here. Number two for Scarborough, just a sophomore, Jared Flaker, very dangerous on these kick returns. Had a kickoff return last week, here against Sanford, and he's very dangerous. He's had a lot of success uh, indoor and outdoor track. Jaquan Semi is the other returner. Hope you enjoy this one on TA TV. Brady Forbes approaches the ball, or underway, sort of in between. Now we have a flag. I think one of the Thornton players might have been offsides. Yeah, that kick right there just shows you how much T.A. thinks of Jared Flaker. A not a deep kick to him. They want no part of him kicking that football. A little squib kick. Offside. Penalty offsides, but just a little squib kick here. Not putting the ball in Flaker's hands. Forbes is trying to put it uh, sort of between the receivers, the up backs, if you will. The, the line of returners in front of your primary returners. Wasn't a bad kick, but what happened is I think one of the, the players going down to cover broke the plane of the 35 yard, uh, the 40 yard line before the ball was contacted. Re-kick from the 35. Squib kick, one of the closest backs gonna pick it up. Returning it out the left sideline with good yardage. I think that was Cody Dudley, and I don't know, in Thornton territory. Yeah, Dudley tries to get to that edge. He does. He creates the edge, gets 
a lot of positive yardage and in to TA territory already. And Scarborough does not need the field position they are getting right here with this dangerous offense. It's not a good sign when your kicker has to make the tackle. And they move it back to the 50, so I guess he might have stepped out of bounds over there. First and 10, Red Storm. The quarterback, Zoltan Pagny, a senior, was shaken up uh, his missed some action this year. In the spread, hands off, that's Garad, a veteran running back. Owen Garad picks up about four and a half, five yards. Garad listed on the roster is six feet, 225. A very explosive playmaker can create space with his size and then has breakaway speed. Opened up the season with a four touchdown performance on the road at Deering. So if TA wants to have good success on the defensive side of the ball, they have to start Garrard. Cameron Hood getting credit for that tackle. Second and six, Scarborough going left to right, opening possession. Player in motion. They give it to him, it's Garad coming this way, and he's gonna have a first down as he really drives forward right at the end. Yeah, Garrard very tough to bring down once he gets into that second level. Nobody in this TA secondary wants to tackle him, a very strong body to take down, gets the edge and gets a Scarborough first down. Thorn tackle is by Ian Patry. Number 52, 5'10", 195, and a junior. First down, Storm from the 39 of Thornton. Panya going to pass out to the left. It's complete for a short gain. Good coverage by Thornton. That was Eli Arsenal on the tackle. Excellent, excellent tackle there by Arsenal. Connor Kelly gets that ball over there and he had some space to move, just a one-on-one -on -one tackle, great tackle by Arsenal. And Pony is really gonna try to see how this TA secondary holds up. No returning starters in this secondary. Pony, a very good quarterback, so very interested to see how this TA secondary holds up. It was Connor Kelly on the reception. Pony back to pass, quarterback draw, tucks it under. He's gonna be close to a first down. I think he has it. We talk about how good of a runner Owen Garrard is, but Zoltan Pony, a big kid himself, 6'4", 6'4", runner, fast quarterback, can make some plays with his feet. He's another very dangerous option on this loaded Scarborough offense. First down, Scarborough. Ball resting at about the 27 yard line. Two minutes into the game. Flank to this near side is Semi. Another receiver to the top. Pony pitches back to Garad. Garad makes a cut and falls forward again. That's what Scarborough's want to do tonight. They want to get the ball to Garad in space. Once he gets into that second level, that very tough to bring down by those smaller guys in the secondary. If he gets past the defensive linemen and the linebackers, he can go a long way. Cameron Hood gets another tackle. Eight yard gain for Garrard. Garrard a senior, six feet, 225. He's got it again. Close to the first down. Good job that time by the Trojan defense. Containing Garrard, doesn't get the first down on the second and three, gets caught up right in the middle of it. And let's see if TA can do it again. Stop Garrard in another short yard situation, very hard to do. Ian Patry getting credit for the tackle. Third and about one. Scarborough still in the spread in his third and short. Garrard, the lone running back. Coaching staff wants him to switch behind Pagny. Pagny running parallel to the line of scrimmage. He breaks the tackle. He's going to have a first down. Look like Thornton may uh, string it out to the sideline there, Calvin, but Pagny get away. Yeah, just a little speed option to the left side. Pagny decides to keep it a smart decision, breaks the C.J. Lebrecht tackle and picks up a first down from Scarborough, whose offense is really rolling right now. 
Cameron Hood made the stop, but not before, as we said. Another first down. Looks like it's first and 10 for about the 12. Four minutes into the game. Two receivers near side, one top of the screen. Panye, low snap, he's got it though. Throws out to the right sideline. And thrown out of bounds, making the catch. Jaquan Semi. Yeah, Ponyi get controls a bad snap, just a short drop back, hits Semi over in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Geekis. Geekis able to wrestle him to the ground, but not before another quality play by Scarborough, who again finds himself in a second and short situation. Second down and about three. Up the middle, Garad breaks the tackle near the goal line. It's going to be first and goal, a red storm. TA put a bunch of guys in the box there and still not enough to prevent Garad from getting the first down. Just lowers his pads and bowls through the interior of the Trojan defense. Gets very close to the end zone, but gets brought down and Scarborough will have a first and goal from the one. Stop made by Adam Mateer, senior lineman for Thornton. First and goal, Storm. Garrard dives. Touchdown, Scarborough. Owen Garrard for one yard out. He didn't make much, but he didn't need much. Yeah, Scarborough with an eye formation and they set up Cody Dudley as the far back as they lined up in the eye. They put Garrard as the, in the fullback position. Just a quick hitter to Garrard. Didn't need much, didn't get much, but scores a Scarborough touchdown. Scarborough going for the place kick. Snap is down, the kick is up, the kick is good. Liam McDonald, sophomore, boots it through. 7.27 to go in the first quarter. Scarborough seven, Thornton Academy nothing. High school football on TA TV. Jim Toomey. On the play-by-play, -play, Calvin Cristoforo, our Carla man, TA student, also a TA student on the camera, Dylan Paulette. <laughs> TA TV's Jeff Christenberry taking some extra footage. And there's a squib kick by Scarborough, and they're going to have a penalty. Very similar to what happened. Just like four kicks right there, Scarborough's thinking the same idea. They don't want to give the ball down to the big three down there of Lebrecht, Bracamonte, and Geekis. Try to squib it to the guys out front, but offsides is the call, and Scarborough will have to kick from five yards back. Everybody always has to be alert on a kickoff, but especially when you know they may be squibbing it. Even your front line, Calvin's gonna be alert in case they kick it off of you. It goes right through, picked up by one of the upbacks. I think that's Ethan Logan. And again, pretty good field position out to the 45 yard line. Good job by Logan there, takes his time, try, scoops that up properly, just gets as much as he can. And great TA field position for this TA offense. And let's see if they take advantage. I've seen games where they tried to squib it, but they did it with a lot of force, and I've seen it hit the linemen in that first line and, and be recovered. It was like an accidental onside kick. Very important here that Thorne picks up some first downs. Definitely. Scarborough has all the momentum on this sideline here. TA really needs to have a good drive here. Will Mitchell, sophomore quarterback, hands off, and there's Bracamonte. Bracamonte's still on his feet. He's in Scarborough territory. He's only going to pick up about five yards, Calvin. He ran about 30. Yeah, Bracamonte had a pretty good start there. Tried to create that edge. Tries to make a man miss, but goes backwards a couple yards. Looks like he had six or seven yards going forward. Tries to make a cut. 
drops back about, but he still drops back a couple yards, but still picks up five yards. Cody Dudley on the tackle for the storm. Brocamonte will flank this near side. Next man over is Lebrec. CJ Lebrec. Mitchell hands off. I think that's Grant Dow being thrown back. Just a quick zone read right there by Mitchell. Hands it right off to Dow, who gets collapsed by that Scarborough front. Still picks up three yards. TA will have a third and manageable here. And this is a big play for this Trojan team. They got to really continue this drive here and not give the ball back to Scarborough. Anthony Griffin on the tackle, number 79. 6'7", 250. Third down and about three for Thornton, their first possession of the night. Taping this on September 15, 2017. Mitchell back to pass, right sideline. It's complete to Bracamonte. And he may be a little short, Calvin. It's gonna be very close, might be a little short here. Now it's decision time. Fourth and about a yard, a long yard. Here for T.A. It looks like they're going to keep their offense out. They like how they're do it going right now. T.A. is going to see if they can go for it. They're bringing in the full house backfield, I think, here, which has been very effective in their prior game. So T.A. bringing in the heavy package, looking to get that one yard and continue this drive. Along that offensive line, 79, Adam Mateo, 74, Jack Webb, 71, Jerry Nason, 75, Cody Agru. Again, the full house, Mitchell under center. Long count, hands off over the right side. First down, Thornton. One in doubt, give it a big Montano. He is a power back out of that T formation. Jason Montano takes the ball right off the, right off the handoff, doesn't do much, lowers his pads, pushes forward and picks up a big Trojan first down. Montano, the junior, 5'11", 260, wearing number 30. 83, Ethan Logan's the tight end. Cam Jones, 89, was on that full house backfield as, uh, as a double tight end. Back in the spread, Mitchell hands off. Picked up a couple. Let's see who that is. It's Grant Dow, the ball carrier, number 29. Junior, 5'10", 180. Yeah, it looks like Dow did a pretty good job They making something out of nothing here. Didn't have the biggest hole. Be sh gets shifty though, picks up two or three yards, and now TA goes from a second and 10. Dow creates a few yards, second and seven, to keep this TA drive going. Again, two receivers this side, Bracamonte. Next man on the inside is Lebrecht. High snap, Mitchell scoops it. Runs for the sideline, and it goes out of bounds for a loss. Quick reaction by Mitchell. Yeah, that's what could not have happened here for TA. That is probably the worst scenario that could happen. A bad snap, Mitchell couldn't handle it, loses a bunch of yards. TA goes from a second and seven to a second and 16, third and 16. They're going to have to pull something here and get a big first down, or Scarborough's going to get the ball back with the momentum still on their side. You got Geekus flanked out. Next man over is Ethan Logan. Mitchell throws a middle screen to Bracamonte. Storm players all over him. And Bracamonte knocked out of bounds. And Scarborough's pretty disciplined because... You almost said, gee, one of us gonna be a late hit. It's because the Bracamonte was dancing near the sidelines and, and did finally step out, but it was like three dark jerseys in the area. Yes, yeah, Scarborough, defense very impressive here on this drive. TA did get the one first down, but contain Anthony Bracamonte on the screen pass. Bracamonte in space, as we've seen in these past couple games, very effective. Scarborough does a good job to minimize his gain, and is gonna have to punt on fourth down. Okay, somebody moved. Now Scarborough was jumping into the, 
one of the Thornton linemen might have jumped, but Scarborough was like. I think it might be a false start on the center there. Looks like he went with a little twitch on the snap before snapped it. I think the center is 33, Thomas Palmer. He just, little jerk motion, draws a penalty, and now T.A. is going to be backed up another five yards. One of the Scarborough linemen was really in that one of the gaps, and it was almost like he was going to blitz what you see a linebacker come up and blitz. And this, of course, it was a punting situation. I think that might have made Thornton a little nervous. It's a good snap. The kick is away by Grant Dow. Takes the Thornton bounce, and now they're going to mark it around the 17-yard line. So not a bad kick and not a bad uh, turn of events for Thornton that time. No, great job by Grant Dow. Controls the snap, snaps it, gets a good punt away, takes a TA bounce. Now Scarborough's going to have a lot more to go than they did on their last possession, but let's see if TA's defense can respond after Scarborough just marched down the field with a very impressive opening drive. 5.06 to go, opening period. Scarborough seven, Thornton nothing. Thornton will be home to Chevres on September 23rd and Barney Eagle homecoming on September 30th. Panye fakes, sprints to his left, throws. And I think it's complete. He took his time and hit a pass over near the Thornton bench area. Pony with a little rollout to that left side has plenty of time to make a good throw, and he does. Right to Semi, who has run a little comeback route to that left sideline, hits Semi, another first down for Scarborough, whose offense continues to roll. Jaquan Semi, a senior, 6'1", 185. Member of the basketball team, as I recall. From their own 32. Loose ball, maybe. Thorne thinks they have it. Do the officials agree? I don't, let's see. It is Thorne ball! So I guess it was on the snap. Not sure who got the return. I'm sure the Thorn coaches do. Yeah, that is an absolutely huge play for this TA defense. Scarborough has been running the spread offense very effectively in the early going. They try to mix their up their formation, go with the I formation. Pawnee can't handle the snap. TA recovers the fumble, and now they're in business with the football already on the Scarborough 30 yard line. Let's see if the Trojans can take advantage. Lebrecht flanks this near sideline. Mitchell hands off to Bracamonte. Bracamonte, stiff arm, goes out of bounds for a short gain. Yeah, Scarborough's doing a very good job stringing those play out. T likes to get the ball to Bracamonte on the exterior, see if he can pick up the edge. But Scarborough's defense is doing a very good job in containing him. They're setting the edge. Bracamonte only picks up a yard on that play, and you consider that a win for the Scarborough defense. I'm going to watch, see if Jaquan Semi goes everywhere that uh, Bracamonte goes. He might be shadowing him. He's on him right now. If you look over there, notice how they have safety help? Mitchell going to keep it. What I saw is Brockamani flanked top of the screen, matched up with Semi across from him, but also one of the safeties for Scarborough was tilted that way. Yeah, that must be Scarborough's game plan going in. Don't let Anthony Brockamonte beat you. That play right there was just a quick quarterback power right up the middle. Mitchell gets a snap, lowers his pads, picks up as much yards as he can, turns that second and nine into a third and manageable here for this TA offense, who has got to have two shots at picking up these five yards. Derek Medor checks in number 40, a junior, 6'1", 200 pounds for the Trojans. Mitchell got to keep it. He faked to Bracamonte, and Mitchell fell forward. Yeah, I think he has the first down, Kelvin. Great play call there. Love that play call. 
Bracamonte's been getting the ball. We've seen that play two or three times where Bracamonte gets the ball and runs off the edge. Mitchell just takes it right out of his stomach and picks up the first down. And T.A.'s looking good here on their second drive. Cody Dudley getting credit for the stop. 3.20, a moving clock, first period. Scarborough leading seven to nothing. On September 15th, 2017, out to Lebrec. Lebrec breaks a tackle. CJ Lebrec dives. Touchdown, Trojans. Mitchell hits CJ Lebrec in the left flat, and Lebrec did the rest of the work down the sideline and just made it into the end zone. Quick screen right there off to Lebrec, gets a block, makes a man miss, and gets into the end zone. CJ Lebrec. Had a career high four touchdowns last week for this Trojan offense. Three of them receiving, picks up his first receiving touchdown of this game, and TA is an extra point away from tying this one up. Brady Forbes is the kicker. The kick is up, the kick is good. 3.05 to go left in the first period. It's Thorne Academy 7, Scarborough 7 on TA TV. So Thorne takes advantage, recovering that fumble. And they went in. Brady Forbes to kick off. Again, see what kind of a kick they give. This time they kick it deep. That's Semi over there. Going up the middle and being wrestled down. Let's see if Thornton made that tackle. I think it was 29 Grant Dow who came up into the big hit on Semi. Looked like Semi had some uh, speed going up the middle there. Grant Dow rips him to the turf, and now Scarborough is pinned back deep here. I like that deep kick way more than a little squib kick. The thing was that squib kick, it prevents the long kickoff return. But Tia does a good job going down, manages that kickoff return, and now Scarborough is back on their 29-yard line. Again, excellent tackle by Grant Dow. Looks like a auditioning for the rodeo circuit as he bulldog semi to the ground. Panye talking to players behind him. Panye under center. This, and let's see. They took too long. As Panye was directing traffic in his own backfield, then it cost him. Yeah, I'm surprised Scarborough's coming back out there with that I formation on that first drive using strictly the spread. Very effective, giving the ball to Gerard, getting some quick passes. Pawnee that time, once again, goes into the I formation. Last time he was in it, they fumbled the football. Scarborough sticking with it, though, and picks up the five-yard delay of game penalty after the confusion in the backfield. Two fifty-eight to go, first period. Big crowd on hand. Scarborough's got two student sections, one to our left standing and one to the far right. And as once again, Thornton Academy travels very well. Pandey throws out off the hands, intended for Connor Kelly. In coverage, Ethan Agikis. Yeah, that play was a timing route to the right sideline. The ball was in the air before Kelly made his cut. Looking for the ball to be right there when he turns around, the ball was just a little bit outside of his outstretched reach. And now TA defense looking good again. Second and long for Scarborough. Well, looks like a little fog maybe. If you look at the lights there. Very humid day cooling off now. The temperature probably right now about 64 degrees or so. The player in motion. Panye gave it to the player and a good ball handling. A pretty good pursuit by the Trojans. That was Jaquan Semi on the carry. Yeah, a little pitch to Semi coming in motion. He had some speed going into that defense, but a great tackle by Mr. Reliable Cam Hood. Comes up with the stick, and now second, third, and long for Scarborough. Cam Hood leading tackler last year for the Trojans. One of the senior captains, number 45. He's 5'11", 200. Third down play. Panye back to pass, across the middle, incomplete. 
Reese Lagerquist, the tight end, was there. Lagerquist, a big tight end for this Scarborough team, listed as 6'5", runs a seam route right up there, but Jordan Sharp with the excellent coverage, and Scarborough is going to have to punt for the first time tonight. Looks like the punter is Cody Dudley. Lebrec and Bracamonte back deep for the Trojans. It's a good snap. The kick is away. It's going to be short. Go out of bounds right near midfield. So Trojans with excellent field position. TA once again starting a drive in Scarborough territory. Let's see if their offense can pick up more momentum after the drive that they had to score the touchdown. Good field position again for this Trojan offense. So let's see what they can do for it. Actually marked at 48, so in Scarborough territory here are the Trojans. Again, Madur playing uh, a fullback. Grant Dow the deep back. Mitchell back to pass, under pressure, guns it downfield and nobody there. As Scarborough certainly put the pressure on Will Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell goes a deep drop back. Looking to hit Bracamonte deep up this left sideline. Get a lot of pressure on Mitchell as he threw the ball and just threw it up, and nobody was there for Bracamonte. Pass ball is incomplete. Second and 10 for TA. LeBrec, top of the screen. Everybody else in tight. Mitchell fakes and keeps. And stopped after a short gain. Yeah, we saw that play run very nicely on their last drive. Same play, just the opposite direction. Fake handoff to Bracamonte. Power run by Mitchell. Mitchell still gets some good positive yardage here, but only four yards. It brings up a third and six for this TA offense. Making a tackle for the storm, number 21, Jeremy Sandrowski. Third down and about seven for Thornton Academy. 1.15 to go, first period, we're tied at seven. Mitchell throws, that's picked off. Scabro down the left sideline. And out of bounds over there. And a flag upfield at midfield after the play. A couple of Thornton players are down behind the play. We'll see what that's going to bring. I'm going to say there's going to be somebody took a late hit after the ball changed possession. I'm going to guess. Is that Jack Webb down there? It is Jack Webb down there. TA senior captain on the offensive line. He'd be a huge loss for this TA team. Big tackle, their best offensive lineman, experienced offensive lineman, great player for this TA team, and he would be a huge loss. On that pass play, Mitchell took another big drop back, tried to hit, I think it was Lebrec, over on that far sideline. Semi just jumped the route and got a big return from Scarborough. I think this penalty is gonna be after the play, just like you said, it's gonna be a Scarborough football, but farther back, that we initially thought. Because Mitchell and Webb are both down behind the play. And Jack Webb is up. There's the good news of the day. That is an excellent sign for TA because they cannot lose, afford to lose him. It's a pretty good throw by Mitchell on a line, but Semi was sort of lying in the weeds a little bit. And he's very fast as we've seen already. And he just cut right in front as we think it was Brock, uh, you thought it was Lebrec? Scarborough getting the momentum back after the interception. 
So let's see how TA's defense responds. They've been very well, very good the past couple of drives. So let's see if TA's defense can keep it rolling and force Scarborough to another punt. And this is a spot penalty. In other words, they threw the flag at the 50 right around there, so they move it back. Scarborough at the 35-yard line. The referee gave the unsportsmanlike. I think somebody was trying to block the Thornton players when the ball was like 20 yards downfield. That's what I think. All right, Scarborough, first and 10, 105 to go, first period, low snap. Panye quickly pitches it out. And Cody Dugley. Yeah, they I give it to, the ball. Give it to Dudley coming in motion, trying to pick up the edge, can't get it, has to cut back inside. Hood picks him up, still a good gain for Scarborough. Cuts it in half, second and five now from Scarborough. Let's see if their offense can pick up some steam. Zoltan Panye, very cool because he sort of got that off the ground, like a short hop. Up the middle, Garad, net in the hole. Cam Hood, look at that Cam Hood with a textbook tackle. Yeah, Cam Hood comes in and cleans it up on the play, but it was really Adam Mateer who hit Garrard at his feet. Cam Hood comes in and cleans it up. Stopping Garrard is a big key to TA success tonight. Mateer does a great job there, and a third and four coming up from Scarborough. This will be the last play of the quarter. Ian Patry also getting an assist, according to the PA. We play one quarter of action on September 15th. The score, Thorn Academy 7, Scarborough 7 on TA TV. All right, back here at the Mitchell Complex, Scarborough High School. We played one quarter of Class A football action. Thornton 7, Scarborough 7. Scarborough scored first. And then the Trojans scored after they took a uh, recovered a fumble. Jim Toomey along with Calvin Cristoforo, Dylan Paulette on the camera, Jeff Christenberry on site. And it's actually the Thornton student body to our far left. Low snap coming out to this sideline. Could be a first down. We'll see where they're going to mark it. Right at the stake. It was a third down play. Semi made the catch. Great he, job by Semi there, knowing where the sticks are. Semi, I think he's gonna pick up that first down, he will. But great job by Semi, knowing where the sticks are, picking up that first down. But also a great one-on-one -on -one tackle by Arsenal to prevent him from getting any more. This ball gonna be at Scarborough's own 46 yard line. For a number of years, this side was the home side, only about three years ago did they move the home fans over here. The home press box is on the other side. So we have Scarborough students to our far right and Thornton to our far left. It is Garad. Garad breaks tackle, still moving. Another first down for Scarborough. And Owen Garad, we haven't called his name for a while. We called it early in their first quarter, and then they started doing some other things. Yeah, I don't know why Scarborough went away from Garad. He was running the ball very well. Gets the ball in his hands on the exterior there. He has the speed to get through, and once he gets into that secondary, nobody wants to tackle him one-on-one. -on -one. Patry combines for the tackle in that secondary, but another very impressive play by the Scarborough offense, who continues to move forward on this drive. Ian Patry gets another tackle. 64, Tanner Lynn, a sophomore, is in that defensive line. Panye throws the right sideline, incomplete, over the head of Semi. Actually, Connor Kelly. And glad Jack Webb got up because this being a captain hasn't been too lucky for the uh, Trojans. As we know, Wyatt LeBlanc, a captain, is going to miss the entire season after having a surgery, I think, on a shoulder. And then uh, also Garrett Lynn, who's been moved to an inside lineman this year, has been out for three weeks. He could come back next week. On the keeper, Panye. Being dragged a little bit. C.J. Lebrecht part of that tackle. Also number 15, Eric Hyman. Also I see for the first time, number 70 in there, Tyler McDonough. A sophomore, 6'1", 240. Ten
Ten and a half minutes on a moving clock. Two receivers for the Storm, top of the screen. Third and short. Senior quarterback Pony, a low snap. Again, he scoops it up, trying to make something out of nothing. Throws complete. First down, Scarborough. And I'll tell you, Pony's been cool as the proverbial cucumber. Yeah, Pony controls the snap there, being chased by number 33, Thomas Palmer. Rolls out to that far sideline and finds his favorite target, Semi, for a big Scarborough first down. Jordan Sharp on the stop. But not until the Storm have another first down. Ball on the 20 yard line of Scarborough, first and 10. Actually on the Thornton 20. Scarborough attacking right to left. Quarterback draw, Pagne. Somebody bear hugged him in there. I think that was Patry again, 52. That was an excellent tackle by Patry. Looked like Pawnee had some forward momentum going through that hole, but Patry just, Patry just wraps him up and brings him to the ground. An excellent stop by TA only holding Pawnee to a four yard pickup. Second down and six for the Red Storm. Both teams again coming in 2-0 and on the season. Storm with two receivers near side. Low snap again. Handoff this time up the middle. Most likely Garad. Yeah, another bad staff there by Scarborough. Looks like they're gonna change out the footballs, I think, but Scarborough has not had a lot of success snapping the ball. Tonight, some fumbles, the one recovered by TA. Other than that, they've been all in the shotgun. Pony has collected them for the most part, but still always dangerous when that ball goes down on the ground from the snap. Cameron Hood getting another call, doing the defensive work. Third and about four for Scarborough, certainly in four down territory. Pitch out, Garad cuts it back in. And I think it's going to be a fourth down play here, Calvin. Great job there by Ian Patry, hitting Gerard on that play, a speed option off to that left side. Pawnee elects to flip it to Gerard, but Ian Patry right there for TA, and it looks like Scarborough is going to go for it. We were watching their kicker earlier in warmups. Number one, Liam McDonald, and he was making these play, making these kicks, but Scarborough elects to keep their offense out on the field. Pony under center, fourth and less than a yard. Pitch out, around the right side, flag on the play. Cody Dudley trying to go wide right and a flag flew. The flag is most likely, I think it's gonna be a holding on Scarborough, which is really gonna hurt this drive. They're gonna back him up 10 yards if that's the call and make this fourth and two, a fourth and 12. Let's see what the call is. You know, Looks like they're talking to the TA captains, which is always a good sign. Uh, a very good sign. Holding against Scarborough is the call. And that's a big call right there by TA, by these officials. Scarborough had the first down on that, on the toss out there to number 15, Cody Dudley. But TA gets the call, and now Scarborough goes from a fourth and two to a fourth and 10. And let's see what they can do here, trying to pick up this first down. This is a huge play in this football game. Momentum is going to sway one way big time on the outcome of this play. One receiver to the top of the screen, that's semi. Near side, Kelly. Pagne, back to pass. Cross the middle, too high. That ball sailed and Thornton takes over. This young TA secondary is playing very well tonight. Pagne tries to go back up to the big tight end. Reese Lagerquist over his head and TA secondary comes up big again and they'll take the football back with seven minutes to go in the half and let's see if they can put a drive together here to try to get into the halftime room ahead. 
Thorne sideline excited on that fourth down stop. I think one of the linemen we haven't mentioned tonight for Thorne, number 77, Anson Rubbishow. He's a junior, six feet, 225 in that offensive line. Mitchell hands off, straight ahead. Short yardage for Thornton. TA lined up in the pistol formation that time with Dow lined up behind Mitchell. Just a quick handoff by Grant Dow and a two yard pickup. Second and eight for the Trojans. And we see Jack Webb in the lineup. So not only did he leave the field under his own power, he's back in the lineup in the offensive line. It's going to be under six and a half minutes to go. By the time this ball was snapped in the first half. A brief hole that time for Dow. Flag on the play. I believe they're stopping the clock. Yeah, that was a good hole there created by the TA offensive line. Garrard steps up, though, and makes a tackle. Let's see what the penalty is. Face mask on Scarborough. So it's going to be a first down for Thornton. First down for the Trojans and a big one. See if this drive can pick up some fire and windle this clock down. So it's going to be with a five yard face mask and not the automatic first down. It's going to be second and two for TA which is still an upgrade from those third and six they had upcoming. No question about that. Full house backfield, TA. And it looks like a first down for Thornton. Is that Montano? Yes, it is. Short yard situation, it's Montano time. Give it back to him. Picks up another first down, what he's been doing all year. So hard to bring down in those short yarded situations. And TA picks up a first down. Under six minutes to go in the first half. We're tied at seven. Cody Agro is the center. Mitchell juggles it, throws out to the left flat, and incomplete. Boy, that was dangerous. That was dangerous. Yes, it was. TA came up with trips to the left side. Bracamonte in the backfield. Lebrecht and Geekis lined up on the line of scrimmage, tried to get some lead blockers in front of Bracamonte for that screen pass, but they get through, and that play, luckily for TA, only drops to the ground for an incomplete pass. Clock stopped to 5.31 to go first half. In motion, Madour. Pitch out Brockamani, trying to get this near side and running out of territory. Nice tackle by Scarborough's Jeremy Sandrowski. Yeah, back to Anthony Brockamonte. TA trying to get some creative ways to get the ball in Brockamonte's hands, kind of like the Chiefs do with Tyreek Hill. Very different players, but still trying to do the same thing. Get the ball into his hands with some space and see if you can make a play. Scarborough's done a great job tonight of limiting him. Of course, he was running to the narrow side of the field. Didn't have much territory over here on this sideline. Let's see, Bracamani flank nearest us. Far side, C.J. Lebrecht. Mitchell throws out to Lebrecht. Cuts it back inside, but nice pursuit by the Red Storm. Good defensive stand here by Scarborough after T.A. picked up the first down. Looks like T.A. was going to get a drive going, maybe get another first down and dwindle this clock down. But Scarborough gets him off the field with five minutes to go. Scarborough is going to have the football with plenty of time to work their offense and see now if they can go in the halftime room up. Back deep for Scarborough is going to be Jeremy Sandrowski. He's a senior, 5'8", 150. He's also has some speed. The punt by Dow. It's caught 
And a short gate out to the 40, Sandrowski. Yes, can Sandrowski picks that up there. I thought, I bet the TA defender running up that sideline saw Sandrowski called for the fair catch, but he didn't. Doesn't get much yards. Another good punt there by Dow. And Scarborough still is going to have the ball with very good field position, though. Thomas Palmer getting credit for the tackle coming downfield. Ball right at the 40 yard line. Scarborough's own a 40. On the 22nd, the Red Storm will be at Massabesic and then home to South Portland on the 29th. Again, Thornton will be home to Chevrolet on the 23rd. And on the 30th, how's that for a homecoming matchup against the Barney Eagle Scots at Hill Stadium? But right now, we have business at hand. Low snap again, scooped up by Pagne. He throws left sideline and over the fingertips of Semi. And on the play, nice defense. Eli Arsenal was right on him. Yeah, Semi tried to do an out and up there, run the quick out. Pagne pumps to him, cuts it up the field. Arsenal is not fooled though. Excellent coverage on the play. Semi still an opportunity to make a play out of it, but just goes through his hands. Excellent coverage by Eli Arsenal, and this young TA secondary continues to impress. Arsenal only listed a 5-7 on the program. Semi listed at 6-1. Second down play. Pitch out coming this near side. Semi, and he's gonna have a first down. He's very quick along the sideline. Semi comes in motion here and they just flip it to him. He gets the edge, picks up a good gain and a first down for Scarborough as they move the chains. Four minutes to go in the first half. Plenty of time from Scarborough. It's offense to operate as they pick up a first down. See if they can get some traction going on this drive. Head coach of Scarborough, Lance Johnson, his eighth year. Kevin Kiesel of Thornton, the head coach, in his 18th year. Right up the middle, Garad. Garad, thrown back. Then he still got loose. He keeps those legs moving. Yeah, right to Garrard right there, right up the middle. Cam Hood, another big tackle there. Garrard tried to wiggle his way out of his grasp, but Cam Hood holds on for dear life. Garrard only picks up three yards. Another big stop by Hood as his clock continues to run. Under 3.45 to go first half. We're tied at seven. Second and eight, Red Storm. Panye hands off. Cody Dudley. Close to the first down. Jet sweep coming towards us to Dudley there. Ian Patry steps up and makes a tackle but it looks like it's gonna be enough for a Scarborough first down as they'll have the ball with a fresh set of downs on the 37 yard line, looking to punch one in before the half. I think Scarborough has all three timeouts left. First down at the 37 of Thornton. Panye, quick pass. Came up short, intended for Kelly. Yeah, just a quick drop back, quick, quick hitch over there by Kelly. Pawnee though, too short on the pass as it falls to the turf, second and 10 for Scarborough. As I look around, Calvin, this crowd is really filled in here. You see people in the parking lots and behind the fencing. Second and 10, Storm. Panye gonna keep it. And Panye close to a first down, he may have it. Panye gets a good head of steam there and runs right into the TA secondary. A good step up tackle by Jordan Sharp to stop that play, but he's feeling the effects right now as he's laying down on the turf injured. The Scarborough training staff is talking to him. Good job by Scarborough, they're the closest one to it, so they want to go out quickly, followed by the Thorn staff. 2.57 to go in the first half. 
Thorn Academy 7, the Scarborough 7 on TA TV. But under his own power. Yeah, always good to see that. Sharp coming, running off the field on his own power. Major key in this young DA secondary. First down, Storm. Panye passes near sideline, incomplete. I think that play right there was the same exact play that they ran two plays ago. Quick drop back, quick hitch over to Kelly on this near sideline. Pawnee and Kelly failed to hook up once again, and Scarborough is back to a second and ten. And again, the nice job by the trading staffs because Scarborough was only about ten yards away from the player down, and they hustled out there just in case it was an emergency. You know, somebody having trouble breathing or maybe on their mouthpiece. And Thornton had a lot long ways to go, and then they took over. Garad on the carry. More success to Garrard. We've seen that play a couple of times. Just a pitch right out to him. Garrard lowers his pads as he gets into that secondary. A nice gain. Scarborough, two minutes and 20 seconds to go. But that play right there is definitely going to be a key part of their offense going forward, especially in that second half. Third down and four. Red Storm flanked this near side. Tyler Gobiel. Player in motion, now we have a flag. Maybe two players moving at the same time. False start against Scarborough, you're exactly right. Two guys in motion at the same time. That makes this third and four a third and nine, and that is key for TA because you didn't know what Scarborough was gonna do there. They had, they had options, they could run it, they could pass it. Now with third and nine, it's almost a guarantee to see Pawnee drop back and try to throw the ball. If I'm TA right now, I'd be looking for, I'd be looking to cover Pawnee's favorite target, number 11, Jaquan Semi on this Loose play. Loose ball, bad snap. Scabro dribbling it and thrown for a loss. Cody Dudley went back and scooped it up. But a tremendous loss for the Red Storm. Yeah, that bad snap, we've seen it a couple times before. That time it hurt the Red Storm going way back. Now they're probably going to have to punt this football away. They had options up there to go for it. The offense looks like it's staying out on the field, though, for a fourth and 20. Clock continues to run. I'm very surprised Scarborough is not in the punt formation right now. They must love their options here for this fourth and long, because if they don't get it, TA should have good field position. Let's see, another whistle. And penalty against Scarborough. Scarborough's hurt themselves with some penalties. Definitely have, and Pawnee looks like they're going to go for it once again. A fourth and a mile for Scarborough. I'm very surprised they're going to go for it. Because the clock's still running left. there. Excuse me, Calvin. Across the middle, complete. And it's going to be Thornton Ball. They did pick up some yardage, and if he had broke one more tackle, it could have been dangerous. But notice Scarborough didn't call timeout, figuring if Thornton took over, there wouldn't be much time left. In this case, 30 seconds. Yeah, I bet we're going to see the victory formation here for the Trojans, it's just a kneel down. And if you're TA right now, you really got to like where you are. Holding the Scarborough offense to just seven points, you receive the second half kickoff. If you're the Trojans coming out of this first half, you have to consider that a win for your young team. Well, saw so at the victory formation, they had three receivers to this near side. Of course, they still may hand it off. And that's what happens. Grant Dow made the carry, picked up two or three yards. And barring a timeout here, looks like that could be it. Actually, Dow picked up about uh, six yards. Clock continues to run. Thornton in no hurry here, so I think 
as you said, they're going to be pretty happy to take this into the locker room. Scarborough scored on their first possession on a long march. Owen Garrod went in from one yard out with 7.27 on the clock. McDonald made the extra point. Thornton came back and scored. 18-yard touchdown pass from Will Mitchell to C.J. Labreck. Brady Forbes' kick. And we're tied at seven. It was to head into the locker room. So go back and join us for the second half of this game taped on September 15. Thornton Academy 7, Scarborough 7 on Thornton Academy Television. Just about ready for the second half. We're tied at seven. Jim Toomey along with Calvin Cristoforo on color. Our cameraman is another TA student, Dylan Paulette. Jeff Christenberry of TA TV is on site. Scarborough scored first, a one yard run by Owen Garrard. The point by McConnell was good. And Thorne Academy tied it up on an 18 yard touchdown pass from Will Mitchell to CJ Lebrecht. Brady Forbes made the kick. Both teams 2 0 on the season. Thornton is home the next two weeks. September 23rd against Chevrolet. September 30th against Barn Eagle on homecoming. Again, live internet coverage of Thornton's home games on MunzingMediaSports.net and also Thornton Academy TV. Thornton is going to receive the kickoff. Here's the kick by McConnell. Through the mist it comes. Bracamonte picking his hole. Bracamonte trying to get to the outside. Bracamonte finally run out of bounds. It'll be pretty good field position for the Trojans. Yeah, last time McDowell kicked it. A little squib kick, not wanting to get the ball into Bracamonte's hands. That time he does kick it deep. Bracamonte picks him up, and Tia will have some pretty good field position to start off his opening drive in the second half. They mark it at the 36. Will Mitchell, the sophomore, is the quarterback. Labreck flanked to the near side. Brockamani in motion. Mitchell's going to keep it. Short gain. Derek Madour is in the backfield, number 40 as well. Yeah, Mitchell just keeps it up the middle. That's always a very tricky play for a defense to figure out because you want to go with Brockamonte. He's so dangerous. Once he gets into that open field, Mitchell just keeps it though, and him and himself is a very hard player to bring down. Scarborough does a very good job that time, and DA is set up with the second and long. Coney Agro is the center, snaps it. Bracamonte's got it this time, and another short gain coming up very nicely done. I think it was Eric Quirk. I guess with 83 it was Lagerquist. Number four, Zach Alos really made that play happen, though. He pushed his blocker into Bracamonte, forcing him to cut back, and Lagerquist was right there to clean the play up. Third and seven for the Trojans, and this is a big play for both sides to see with which way this momentum shifts early. Looks like Geekus, top of the screen, Bracamani, next man over. Loose ball. Mitchell, I think, got it back. I think some players uh, collided back there, didn't they, in the backfield? That was a pretty good snap to Mitchell. I just think he put his head up the field, looking for receivers coming down a little too early. Fumbles the snap, falls on top of it. But T is going to go three and out. And Scarborough's defense, a win here to force a punt and get the ball back. Long snappers, Thomas Palmer in punt formation. Grant Dow. Sandrowski back deep for the storm. The kick is away. Pretty good one through the fog. Now Sandrowski comes up and grabs it. And pretty good yards are on this near sideline. Nice play by Sandrowski. Yeah, Dow's done a pretty good job all night, punting the ball away. Another good time, 
Good one there by Dow. Sindrowski waits for the defenders to go by him, picks it right up on a hop, finds himself with some room, and Scarborough is gonna have good field position to start off their drive. Sandrowski, only 150 pounds. I think Palmer uh, had to go down and make that tackle. Or well, Grant Dow, I think. Scarborough's offense hasn't really done much since their opening drive when they marched down the field. Scarborough starting back in the I formation once again, which bends hot and cold for them tonight. The ball carrier is Cody Dudley. Is still playing on. Great job there by Grant Dow, taking the jersey of Cody Dudley and ripping it back in to his TA buddies to hold him to only a three yard pickup. Grant Dow coming up from the secondary and making an excellent stop there as the play goes to second and seven. Montano made the tackle and he's a little shaken up on the play. Also in their defensively, 89 is Cam Jones, 79 Adam Matea. 15, Eric Hyman. Second and eight, Storm. Pitch out, Dudley trying to go around the right side and nothing there as Thornton strung that one out. Cam Hood once again, old reliable Dudley tried to stretch the ball out as far as he can to that right sideline, waiting for a hole to develop, but not one did and Hood is there to clean it up. A third and long for Scarborough. And the fog continues to roll in here, and this could be a factor. Definitely could. From here on the Scarborough sideline, I cannot see the TA fan section. So that's definitely going to affect play here as we go down the stretch. Connor Kelly, flank near side, third down at about eight. Panye back to pass, throws a deep left sideline. And let's see, a catch, I believe. Connor Kelly, what excellent concentration by Kelly, because that ball was in the air a long time. Yeah, great job by Scarborough all around there. TA had double coverage on Kelly. Arsenal covering him with Lebrecht, safety help over the top. Pony right there just fitted in between the both of them and a big pickup from Scarborough to keep this drive rolling. Connor Kelly, the senior, 6'1", 185. First down at the 15-yard line. Panye under center now. Garad up the middle, a big hole, and Owen Garad all the way in for the touchdown. Late signal by the official. A quick 15-yard burst by Owen Garad. They set up once again in the I formation. With Garrard, the fullback, they had Flaker, the deep back, gives it off to Garrard. Pawnee and Flaker go with the fake option, but Garrard sneaks by the TA defense right up the middle for a big touchdown for Scarborough. Second touchdown for Garrard. Extra point, Liam McDonald. And the kick is good. 7.40 to go in the third quarter. Scarborough 14, Thorn Academy 7 on TA TV. All right, Liam McDonald will kick off. Back deep for Thornton. Labreck, Bracamonte, and Agikis. Let's see what Scarborough does with the kickoff. They were squibbing them uh, pretty much in the first half, and they continue to do that. It's picked up by one of the upbacks. And up over about the 38 yard line. I think that was Ethan Logan again. Made the second return, I think, of the night. Yeah, second time Logan scooped it up there. Another good play. People really underestimate how hard it is to pick up a scooping. A balancing football like that, Logan scoops it up, gets some positive yardage, and TA will start their drive on their own 40 yard line. Three receivers this near side. I'll say again on this possession, they, they don't have to score, they do have to pick up some first downs and tilt the field. Inside, nothing there, Scarborough all over that one. Yeah. 
Yeah, Dow just right up the middle and nowhere to go. This Scarborough defense has been playing very well so far. That was Julian Bailey Cottle, a sophomore, who the other two games he came on late and picked up big yardage, a few touchdowns. He was met that time by big Anthony Griffin, number 79 of Scarborough. Quick pass out, incomplete, thrown behind Lebrecht. It's going to be third and about eight for T.A. Yeah, Lebrecht trying to run a quick slant on there. Great coverage over there by Jeremy Sandrowski. All over C.J. Lebrecht. He defends away the pass, and T.A. finds himself in another third and long and another chance to have a three and out and get this rolling Scarborough offense back on the field. Thorne from their own 41-yard line. Geekus near side. Bracamonte and Lebrecht top of the screen. Mitchell in the spread. Fakes, throws, down the middle, intercepted. What an interception by Tyler Gobiel. Intended for Logan, looks like Logan was gonna make a catch and Gobiel took it away from him. Excellent play by Tyler Gobiel. Logan running a seam route up the middle. Mitchell hit him. Gobiel stepped up and made the big hit on Logan, drawing the ball loose, falling right into Gobiel's hands. And now Scarborough back in business, good field position, and an offense with a ton of momentum. 150-pound junior came up with that ball. That was right down the seam. Looked like a good play about to happen for Thornton. Panya going to keep, bounces off one tackler, falls across the 40, so about the 41 yard line, his own 41. Yeah, fake handoff to Gerard, right to Pony. Gets a good couple of yards here to make this second and manageable for this Scarborough offense. I think we're going to start to see a lot more Gerard. I know he's been getting, a lot, getting the ball a lot here, but I think down the stretch, Gerard is our guy, and I think he's going to be the workhorse for the next quarter and a half. Another tackle credit to Ian Patry. Gerard trying to go wide right. And close to the first down. Flag is down over that far sideline. Looks like 33, Tom Palmer is a little gimpy getting up, so let's see what the call is. Talking to a TA captain, like we've been saying, that's always good. I always wonder why these conversations are take a few seconds. Are you going to take, are you, you know, Captain? Are you going to? Do you want them to have a first down, or do you want to take a, you know, five, ten, or fifteen yard penalty? What do you think? I don't well, know what they're asking. <laughs> TA. That stops the bleeding for this TA defense. Now Scarborough is have to going to have to pick up some more yardage. Looks like a second and seventeen or so coming up for Scarborough, and they're going to have to start to air it out if they want to get these this yardage back. So Scarborough sh shot themselves in the foot a number of times with penalties, but they rebounded on most of them. Loose ball, loose ball, who's got it? Thornton thinks they do, what's the official think? He agrees. The sophomore, Tanner Lynn, coming up with the football. I know what you're saying, another Lynn, but here he is, just a sophomore, big defensive lineman for TA. Comes up with the fumble where they needed it most. Great field position, ball on the 26 yard line. And TA looking to go in and tie this game up. Well, you know Tanner Lynn has to be tough. You know, when there's only one dessert left and there's three other big brothers, you know you have to fight to get that last dessert. That's all I'm telling you. So we had Cody. And Tyler. Who am I leaving out? Garrett. And Garrett, of course. He's He's got to get on the field. A fake is a pass across the middle. Complete. Derek Madore. Madore's been doing a great job all night as a blocking back for this TA offense. Really one of the heroes that doesn't get a lot of recognition. But he gives her, gets hit the ball into his hands. 
Quick seam pass there by Medor. Mitchell hits him, and TA has one of your favorites, a first and 10 from the 12. All right, that's right. You can take eight plays to get in. You prefer less, but you can get a first down without getting a touchdown, fairly deep. I think that's Bailey Cottle. JBC, Julian Bailey Cottle. Yeah, Bailey Cottle has been getting some good reps in some time at the varsity level later in games, but here they must love his toughness. Start coming out in a very meaningful spot for oh, yeah, TA. Exactly right, Calvin. A completely different situation than coming in the fourth quarter in the first two games. They must have confidence he can hold on to the ball as well. Picked up about three and a half, four yards in the play. Second down, Thornton trailing 14 to seven. 4.45 to go third period. Pass, Bracamonte left flat, makes a cut. And through the fog, let's see where they mark it. Looks like it's gonna be third and about two. You know what that means, here they come. Dun, dun, da, da. The heavy package coming in the full house backfield. It's been Montano all night. Let's see if they keep it rolling with him. I think that last play call was a great time to call it. Scarborough had the blitz coming up the middle, give it up to Bracamonte in space, and here comes the full house backfield. Mitchell under center. Hand off to Montano is met in the hole and driven back. Let's see where they mark it. Thorne hopes they give him forward progress because the whistle didn't come too late. They're gonna come out and measure here. I think everyone in the whole stadium knew what was gonna come happen. It's just so hard to stop when Montano gets the ball like that. And I think they're gonna measure, like you said, just to see how much. I, I think they realize it's short. Of course, Coach Kiesel might be requesting it. A couple of things uh, to your advantage. You ex find out exactly how much, Plus, you have time to talk to players and make a call. It's like a free timeout. Let's see how close it is. It's probably very close. <laughs> it's a first down after all that. Wow. I thought Montana was stood up, but add to his perfect record, Another first down picked up, and now they have four chances to punch the ball in from the two-yard two line. Well, that certainly answered my question of, or my hope, that they would give him forward progress. I guess they gave him forward progress, yeah. They're gonna stick with the full house. Referee says, wind the clock, 4.15 to go, third period. Mitchell. Made something out of nothing because he turned and nobody was there, Calvin, it looked like. Yeah, Mitchell, I think, thought the play was coming to Montano back to the left side again, but the whole backfield went right. Mitchell had nowhere to go. And I don't know, I think he might have lost a little bit of yardage, but not as bad as it could have been. And TA still has three more opportunities to punch the ball in from the short yardage situation. Let's see the offensive line. Just knock your man off the line just a little bit. Create a little seam. Montano off the left side. Touchdown Trojans. They waited, took a peek, and then the arms of the referee went up. Short yardage means Jason Montano. Give it back to him. Again, unstoppable. When he gets the ball in his hands, TA is now an extra point away from tying it up in a very good statement drive, taking advantage of another Scarborough fumble the second time they've got good field position on a fumble and punched it in. All right, the kicking game, of course, important. The, the ball must be getting a little slippery because it's very foggy and damp here. Brady Forbes tried to get it down. And it's good. We're tied up. 3.27 to go in the third period. Thorn Academy 14, Discovery 14 on TA TV. Brady Forbes will kick off left to right.
He booms this one. But Semi has it. 10, 20. Up the middle. Eric Hyman has him, among others. We've seen Semi very dangerous when he gets the ball in his hands. A great job by this TA kickoff team as a flag comes in late. Not sure what that call is going to be. That can really change the dynamic of that kickoff. As it stands, Scarborough is not in a very good field position. But once again, talking to a TA captain, looks like Scarborough is going to continue to shoot themselves in the foot and move backwards. And the official will face the official timer, which is on the far side. Looks like blocking below the waist. Major penalty. I started to write down some of the Skyro penalties and I stopped. They've, I think they've had about six penalties and four of them have been major. So now they move it back to the 18. Fog lifts just a little bit. Zoltan Pagne on the ground again. He scoops it and makes a part of yardage. Scarborough fans want a flag, they don't get one. Great job there by Cam Hood. He was blocked into that blocking back, sheds his blocker right at the exact time and takes down the ball carrier. Second and five for Scarborough coming up. And yeah, we just heard off air at the halftime that Scarborough may be missing their starting center. But I'll tell you, Zoltan Pagne has done a yeoman work with those low snaps. Pitch out, semi. Close to a first down. Pagne just quick flip to semi. Coming in motion from left to right. TA's done a pretty good job tonight of limiting the big plays. We've seen in their first two matchups, they both Massabesic and Deering broke off really long touchdown plays. T's got a great job tonight of limiting those deep, long, long touchdowns. So let's see if that continues as we go through. It is a first down for Scarborough from their own 30 yard line. Pagne wants to keep, bounces it out to the side. Pagne down the right sideline. Pagne is inside the 35 yard line as we look across through this fog. Man, I knew I shouldn't have said that. Pagne looked like he was in some trouble off to that right side, broke a couple of tackles, buying some space, and a big gainer for Scarborough as they move up the field, pick up momentum as the ball goes into Thornton Academy territory. I think that was C.J. Lebrecht that finally got him out of bounds over there. Lebrecht playing two ways tonight. Ball at the 33 of Thornton. Garad up the middle, churning his legs. Thornton trying to drive him back. Scarborough really liked that formation right there. They have the I formation with Garrard in the fullback position. They like to give him the ball right in that quick hitter. TA holds that to a three yard gain. Second and seven for Scarborough. Grant Dow did the defensive work for Thornton. Second and seven for the Red Storm. Pagne under center now. Pitch back. Making the cut and getting through. Possibly could go. Touchdown, Scarborough. There's Jarrett Flaker, the speedster. We said in the opening, Flaker was dangerous. Looked like he was going to be stopped for a minimal gain on the play, if any gain. Breaks a couple of tackles and goes into the end zone for a touchdown. For 29 yards out, the sophomore Flaker. Once again, M McDonnell will attempt the point. 
Line drive this time. And it got through there somehow. With one minute to go in this third quarter, Scarborough has taken the lead. 21 for Scarborough, 14 for Thorn Academy on TA TV. Jim Toomey, along with TA students, Calvin Cristoforo, Dylan Paulette, Jeff Christenberry of TA TV, on site as well. As we tape this game on September 15th, on the campus of Scarborough High School. And the Red Storm of Scarborough just taking the lead over Thorne Academy, 21 to 14 on a 29 yard run by the sophomore, Jarrett Flaker, outstanding track athlete as well. And we saw his speed once he broke a tackle. Again, a squib kick. That's Derek Medor picking it up and quickly tackled. But again, 36 yard line will be the spot. Let's see how TA's offense responds now. Scarborough getting the momentum all back after TA had scored the touchdown. TA's offense is gonna need to get some momentum here. Move down the field. If they don't score a touchdown, they're gonna need some first downs to flip this field position. But let's see how TA's offense responds. Zach Alofs made the stop on Medor. Mitchell Bark signals, fakes. Now he passes across the middle. CJ Lebrecht right down the seam, all the way inside the 35 yard line. Good looking play for the Trojans. That must have been a breakdown in coverage because CJ Lebrecht is wide open up the sideline. Lebrecht, four receiving touchdowns on this season, big gainer. Mitchell finds him right down the middle of the field, silences the Scarborough crown and gives TA a big first down. Ball resting right on the 35 yard stripe. Three receivers, top of the screen. Mitchell inside handoff, Bailey Cottle stumbles, falls forward for a couple. Again, along that offensive line, Cody Agro is the center. 77, Anson Rubishow. 74, Jack Webb. 71, Jerry Nason. The tight end is 83, Ethan Logan. Second down and eight for the Golden Trojans. Again, Thornton will be home the next two weeks, the 23rd and the 30th. Live coverage on Munzig Media. Sports.com and TATV live internet. Got 12 minutes of football left, or at least 12. Thorne Academy, second down play. It's Geekus nearest to us. They pass to Lebrecht. Lebrecht gets by one tackler, and it looks like he may have a Thorne first down. Looks like they're trying to. Get C.J. Lebrecht a couple of different ways uh, to get the ball. Yeah, every time they have Geekus and Lebrecht on the line of scrimmage and Bracamonte in the backfield, Scarborough has to be thinking quick screen to Bracamonte. Fake the quick screen, get the ball to Lebrecht in space, picks up another T.A. first down as T.A. starts to establish the pass as their offense moves down the field. Now the same three receivers go to the top of the screen. Mitchell to Bracamonte, and I think a flag came in. Holding on Thornton, I think the might be against the Weber was trying to block for Bracamonte, I think. Looked like Bracamonte tried to make a cut on that play and ran in to his blocker, CJ Lebrecht. Got to be a penalty against Thornton, probably going to be a hold. Set up a first and 20 for TA. So let's see how TA responds after being knocked back. Penalty is declined. Decline the penalty. So from first and 20 to second and 13, if you're TA and it's first and 20 and you pick up seven yards, 
nothing wrong with that. So interesting decision for Scarborough to decline the penalty, second and 13 nevertheless for TA. Very curious. Geek is top of the screen. Brockamani in the slot, Lebrecq. Trying to go to Lebrecq again. And broken up. Aloff's on the defense for Scarborough. Looked like Procamonte was trying to run a corner route into the into the near corner of the end zone. He was not open. Mitchell tried one of his checkdowns to Lebrecht. Just a little high for Lebrecht to handle. Now a third and long for TA, who's going to have two shots to pick up 13 yards. Now Lebrecht, top of the screen. Procamonte, near side. Mitchell fakes, Mitchell sprints. Mitchell got it back, and now the ball is loose. And Scarborough got it. That actually goes as a reception for Will Mitchell off the deflection. Of course, he couldn't pass it again because he already passed it forward once. And yeah, then that, in the that, ensuing action, he lost the ball. Athletic play by Mitchell to pick it up off the deflection. Tries to run with it, fumbles the football. S Scarborough gets it back as their defense goes, Ben, don't break. Big stop of TA, whose offense was looking good through the air. Scarborough with the ball, chance to kill some clock and have a good drive with their great set of backs. High snap again, and now the referee's going to blow it dead. That could be a break for Scarborough if it was... Yeah, illegal procedure against Scarborough. And actually a break for them this time. Yeah, that would have been a mad dash for the football. Cam Hood was coming off the edge looking to pick it up, but Scarborough, ball starts again. We're not counting penalties, but Scarborough definitely has a lot. Pony under center now. Hand off up the middle and nothing there. Cam Jones in there with some friends. Cam Jones and Thomas Palmer combined to make the big tackle. I think Scarborough's going to that I formation because they don't like the snaps coming out of that shotgun. They go into the I formation, hand it to the far back, Cody Dudley, nowhere to go and a loss. Because of the outcome, Zoltan Pony's gonna have nightmares tonight. He's gonna be chasing a football around his bedroom, scooping it off the floor. I mean, he's kept his cool during this game and some very tough to handle snaps. Second and long, Scarborough. Pony on the keeper. Very strong runner. And finally the whistle. It's gonna be about a third and about 11 for Scarborough. Scarborough spreads out the defense on that play, not even a QB draw, just a QB, get the snap and go. Picks up seven yards, brings it back to third and 10, but still a long distance to go for this Scarborough offense. Nine forty-five remaining, fourth period, Scarborough 21, Thorne Academy 14. Go back to the spread. Pondy across the middle, complete. A big game. He could go all the way. Cody Dudley, touchdown, 74 yards, no flags. Right down the seam, Pondy to Dudley. Right up the seam to Dudley, right over the outstretched arms of Ian Patry who was so close to tipping that football, goes right over him. Dudley picks it up in speed, and he is just off to the races and into the end zone for Scarborough, who takes their biggest lead of the night. The holder is Jeremy Sandrowski. The kicker, Liam McDonald. 
It's a good snap. The kick is up and good. They come back up the field, 9.27 to go in the fourth. Skyver 28, Thorn Academy 14 on TA TV. Okay, Skyver will kick off. Now up by two touchdowns, Liam McDonald. The same trio back deep for Thornton. 21, Bracamonte. 11, Lebrec. 12, Geekus. Another squib kick. Bracamonte has it goes off his chest. Bracamonte picks it up. Bracamonte tries to find a hole and finally tackled near midfield. And nice adjustment and run by Anthony Bracamonte. We've seen that so many times. Defenders see the ball on the ground and their automatic mind is forget the lanes, go straight to the football, and they all collapse. Bracamonte picks it up. And when that happens and he's in the open field, very dangerous. Gets to about midfield before the defenders take him down, but it could have been a lot worse for Scarborough. Ball at the 48 of Thornton. Still plenty of time left, 9.20. You certainly have to score fairly quickly, but you don't have to be in a complete rush. Fake, pass over the middle, Lebrecht. Same pattern again. CJ Lebrecht, first down at the Scarborough 30. I think Scarborough is double teaming Anthony Bracamonte with the corner and the safety help over the top, leaving that middle wide open for CJ Lebrecht to go to work in. That is his third big catch in the past two drives for TA as Will Mitchell in the air game is starting to open up for the Trojans. Nice thrown ball by Will Mitchell. Right on the line. Lebrecht right between the numbers. Mitchell. Throws down the right sideline, that's complete. That one's inside the five yard line. Why not give it back to Lebrecht? Moving the ball down the field, different route that time, up the right sideline. Lebrecht makes a man miss, and TA will have a first and goal. Looking to punch it in and bring this back to a one score game. Let's see where they're gonna mark it. I think it's around, what, the four yard line? Full house backfield. And now a whistle. Okay, Scott wants a timeout. So let's keep it here with 8.43 to go. And yeah, that full house backfield of Thornton Academy has been working all night. A couple of first downs, they've been giving it to Jason Montano on all those plays. Scarborough's defense wants to talk about it and see how they're going to defend it. TA is so good when they go into that full house backfield, they give it to the guy on the far side and have the two guys ahead of them as lead blockers, making it very hard to stuff. So Scarborough wants to talk about how they want to defend that and how they want to stop Jason Montano or Cam Hood from getting into the end zone. Regardless of what they do here, one question has been answered, and that is, how would a young Thornton team react falling behind two touchdowns on the road? Well, all of a sudden, in a matter of three plays or so, they're down with first and goal for about the three, three and a half. Obviously, they want to finish this drive with a touchdown. Cam Jones, 89, comes in. It's a double tight end with 83, Ethan Logan. Montano, Hood, and Dow in the backfield. Will Mitchell under center. Mitchell gonna keep it. Mitchell dragging tacklers. Touchdown Trojans! Will Mitchell! QB follow that time. They had the three guys go ahead of Will Mitchell as lead blockers. Mitchell just follows them in the hole, makes a spin move and gets into the end zone, a huge response for TA. Still plenty of time left in this football game, and TA's gonna get this game back within one score. In about approximately 50 seconds, they answered. The all important extra point, they're all important. And it's wide left. 
looks like it was sailing from here, but sometimes it, it could deceive us. We've seen the referee's hands go up before. This time they waved it off. So it's an eight point margin, 8.36 to go in the fourth. Scarborough 28, Thornton 20 on TA TV. All right, still a one possession game. Credit to the Trojans for answering in less than a minute after Scarborough went up 28 to 14. Nice completions, Will Mitchell to CJ Lebrec. Mitchell took it in, but unfortunately the extra point sail wide. Thornton elects to kick deep. And that's Semi, Jaquan Semi returning it to about the 27 yard line. Still 8.28 to go in the fourth. I expect Scarborough here to go back into their eye formation and try to milk the clock as much as they can, see how much they can get Garrard the football and get first downs here, see if this clock, see if they can get this clock to dwindle down. And if TA gets the football back, might not have a lot of time. Very important drive here for Scarborough, and I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of it on the ground. As we said, they might wanna have Pony under center since they've had trouble with the snaps all night. And Pagne indeed is under center. Straight ahead handoff, three or four yards. Just Gerard on that quick hitter. Gerard is not that, he's much more effective when he gets out onto the edge. Still very hard to bring down in the interior, but not how much it is to get him when you get him a pitch out on the exterior. Still gets a couple of yards, but takes time off the clock, which is the most important thing right now for Scarborough. Panye calls signals. Back to pass, throws it out, complete. It's gonna be a first down for Scarborough. As they threw that one out of the backfield to Garrard, Owen Garrard. They fake the handoff right there and they just sneak Garrard out into the flat, gets him, gets him the ball right there. And we were saying get Garrard the ball in space. They do, not by via the run, but way of the pass. Garrard hard to take down in that secondary, picks up a Scarborough first down. Garrard comes out for a break. Pagne going back to the spread with Calvin, which I'm surprised. Pitch out, going around the left side. That was Flaker, and Thornton was all over that one. Yeah, it looked like Montano had him from down around the legs. I don't know who jumped in to clean it up, but no gain. Hyman came in to pick it up. No gain on the play for the Storm. They do take time off the clock here, but TA, very good start on first down. Eric Hyman, senior defensive end, wearing number 15, 5'11", 185. Second and 10. Another low snap, they get the pitch away. Okay, we'll see any flags. Did he grab him by the helmet or what? The referee's talking it over. They said it was not a face mask. You can hear the Scarborough fans in the background. Third and 10. Option there by Pawnee, he elects to pitch it out. Hyman had pitched all the way and brings him down third and 10. On the third and 10 here for Scarborough. I'd like to see that on replay. Fans at home, you could probably do it. Cross the middle. Broken up, Cam Hood. Cam Hood dropping back from his linebacker position. Got a big paw up in the air and knocked it down. Lagerquist listed as 6'5", goes right up the seam. One-on-one -on -one coverage with linebacker Cam Hood. S sticks the arm up there and knocks the ball down. Fourth and 10 here for Scarborough. And I think this is gonna be their first punt of the night. 5.49 to go. In the fourth, 
Cody Dudley is the punter. Jack of all trades. It's a good snap. High kick. Lebrecht makes the catch and is tackled immediately. Nice coverage downfield for the Red Storm. Obviously Thornton has time. They gotta go about 75, 76 yards and then they have to make the two point conversion. The way their offense has been rolling, getting the ball into the end zone is not the hard part. It's gonna be that two point conversion, that missed extra point is huge right now. Let's see if Mitchell and Lebrecht can get some more connections and move the ball down the field. This young Thornton team hanging in there, trying to make a statement. Mitchell crossed the middle, juggled and caught by Brocamonte. Brocamonte dances around out to about the 30 yard line. Brocamonte, the football in space, just what TA wants to do. Gets in the football, picks up five yards, makes the guy miss, second and five for TA. I believe Thorne has all their timeouts left. Scarborough 28, Thornton 20 as we need the five minute mark remaining. Fourth period, September 15th from Scarborough. Pass complete to LeBrock. He breaks a tackle. 50, 40, 30. 20, 10, touchdown Trojans, no flag. LaBreca again back to the well, just a slant right there. Mitchell gets him the football, makes the guy miss, goes all the way down the field. Now here it comes, the two point conversion. They needed to tie this game up with 4.50 to go. 71 yards, Will Mitchell to CJ LaBreck. Let's see if Thorne gonna call a timeout here. I guess the play's already been sent in. 28-26. In the spread, we got Geekus. And now, let's see. Scarborough gonna call a timeout. So Thornton. Yeah, I guess that's Interesting call there by Scarborough. I know they want to talk it over themselves to get the defensive alignment straight up, but that gives TA more time to maybe pick a better play to try to get this two point conversion and tie the game up. The other thing it does, it gives Thornton a timeout they can use on defense. What do you do, lose power? after the timeout. Let's see what Coach Kevin Kiesel has drawn up. Trojans need a two point conversion to tie. Mitchell throws the deep out to the sideline, knocked down. They try to go to Bracamonte in the right flat and somebody get a hand up. Bracamonte, one-on-one -on -one coverage with the linebacker, Reese Lagerquist. That's a favorable matchup, but the only thing is Lagerquist, six foot five, gets his big hand up and knocks that play down. Scarborough with the two-point lead and then they get into the end zone once again. They'll make it a two-possession game. So TA's defense needs to come up big once again to see if they can get the football back to their offense. Again, they got the three timeouts left. 4.51 on the clock. We 
would love to see Thornton with the ball one more time. Looks like Scarborough's looking, at, looking for the onside kick here. I think it's too early for it myself. The ball come up and juggled and watch out down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds. I think that was... Okay, he missed a couple of plays. Zoltan Pagne, short gain tackled by Jack Webb and now we just had another low snap. And Eric Hyman, I believe, jumped on it for Thornton. Scarborough once again shooting themselves in the foot. Another fumble by Scarborough. And T.A. picks it up here. Great field position for Thornton Academy. Just what the doctor ordered. Not a lot of time taken off the clock. Four minutes to go in this football game. And T.A. is in business. Wow, what a change of events that was. Again, Thorne has plenty of time. They don't have to rush anything. Bragamani near side. Lebrecht top of the screen. Mitchell fakes. Mitchell throws. Bragamani incomplete. Bragamani tried to keep his feet in as the ball went to his opposite shoulder. Son of one of those opposite shoulder throws. Yeah, Bragamani was open over there. Mitchell. Just throws it a little bit too far out of bounds for Bracamonte to catch. Second and 10 for Thornton Academy. Second and 10 Trojans from the 28 of Scabro. 28-26, Scabro leading. Mitchell throws out in the flat to Bracamonte, wants a block, doesn't get one. It's going to be third and long for Thornton. Obviously, four down territory because of time and score. Yeah, Thornton's probably going to try to get the ball back in LeBrecht's hands. He's been their best receiver all night. Two chances to get it to him to pick up this first down. Brock Amani goes top of the screen. LeBrecht on this near side. Geekus in the slot left. Mitchell fakes, sprints to his right. He's looking for Lebrecht. Throws shorter and incomplete. Intended for Geekus coming left to right all the way across the formation. Yeah, Mitchell had plenty of time. Rolled out all the way to his right, looking for options down the field. Just great coverage all the way around by Scarborough. She's going to have a fourth and ten. Derek Madour coming in, Geek is coming out. It's obvious if one of the receivers, you're gonna get past the stakes for sure. Don't come up short. Lebrecht and Bracamonte, top of the screen. Fourth down play, Thornton trailing by two. Late fourth quarter, Mitchell being chased, throws. Incomplete. Lebrecht had a hand on it, but it couldn't hold it. Closely defended over there. Yeah, Lebrecht was there. Looks like the ball hit him right there, but good coverage. And the ball knocks out. TA still has all its timeouts remaining. Three minutes to go in this one, and they need a big defensive stop once again. Give credit to Scarborough as they gave up basically no yardage after Eric Hyman recovered that fumble. Pagne elects to go under center. And it's gonna be a legal procedure, Scarborough I believe. Another false start on Scarborough. That's been the theme of the night, continuing to shoot themselves in the foot. That time, a different formation by Scarborough. Instead of having Garrard as the fullback, he was the deep back when they lined up in the eye. It was number 22, Anthony Purvis, 
who seemed to be the fullback listed on the roster as a tight end. A big body in front of Gerard. So Gerard once again, the deep back when they light up in the eye. Pitch out to Gerard going around the left side. And he's carrying tacklers. And a pretty good gain for Scarborough that time. Yeah, a big 11 yard gain there by Gerard. Pitch out to the far sideline. Gets some good yardage and makes that first and 15, a distant memory at second and six. That leaves the red storm, second down and seven. 2.30 on a moving clock, second and about five. Zoltan Pagne, senior quarterback. Hands off to fellow senior Garad. Pretty well stacked up over there by that Thorne defensive line. And I think Thorne just called timeout. Yeah, good play there by the TA defense, limiting Garrard to a minimal gain. Now it's third and four here on this play. Let's see if Scarborough elects to run or pass. It's kind of depends on which way you want to go. If you run, the clock is definitely going to keep going, and you can milk the clock all the way down and maybe pick up a first down. If you throw and you incomplete it, the clock stops. TA doesn't have to waste another timeout, and you're first to point, forced to punch it away. So if I'm Scarborough, I'm probably going to like to run the football here. Maybe a pitch out to Gerard, get him in space, see if we can pick up the first down while still continuing to run the clock. This young Thornton team growing up here today in the third week of the season. All the media polls uh, picked Scarborough to win this game, but uh, I'm guessing the Thornton coaching staff used that to their advantage coming into this game. Two thirteen on the clock. Scarborough 28, Thornton Academy 26. This is a third down play. Pagne under center. Fumble, it's loose. And I think Scarborough got it back. Wow. Reese Lagerquist came up big. Whoa, that is a big fumble recovery, but more importantly, a big stop by this TA defense. They're gonna get the football back. Coach Kiesel calls a timeout here. One timeout to go, and we're gonna see Will Mitchell, who's had great success throwing the football in the second half, in the two minute drill. TA doesn't necessarily need to get into the end zone though. Brady Forbes has been a good kicker for them. If they can get to like the 15 or so yard line without scoring a touchdown. Brady Forbes has the range to kick that in and TA can escape here with a one point victory. All right, let's go to press with that one. That was a good final chapter. That loose ball was almost the same spot that Eric Hyman recovered the fumble a few minutes ago. Yeah, and Scarborough then... really needs to clean up their, a lot of their mistakes tonight. Fall starts, fumbles. Penalties that have shot them in the foot all night long. TA has been really taking advantage of them. And Scarborough is going to punt here. Looks like TA is going with that punt block formation. Bracamonte, the only player back deep. Don't rough the kicker. High snap. And they get it away. Bracamonte. And there's a block in the back. So just get out of bounds, Anthony. Just touched him. Yeah, I'm surprised Bracamonte didn't call for a fair catch there. They, he had no blockers up front. TA was going to the pump block. Didn't have a lot of blockers. Decided to run with it. In the block in the back, trying to make a block for Bracamonte. Fair catch negates all of that. TA gets the football. But T will be backed up, a minute and 50 to go, and a very exciting finish coming our way. Okay, 31-yard line. Could have been worse. 
1.49 on the clock, and we believe one timeout. Scarborough 28, Thorn Academy 26. Both teams coming into this week 2-0. Will Mitchell fakes. Gave, actually gave it to Brockamani trying to go outside. And he gains some yardage and gets out of bounds. Yeah, I think Scarborough's done a great job all night of bottling Bracamonte up. But that time he gets to the edge. That's his biggest pickup of the night, I think. Big gainer on the play and gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Second and two for the Trojans here. Let's see what they like to do here. I expect another either outside run or pass. Save this timeout and hope look to pick up the first down. Excellent ball handling that time by Mitchell. He faked me out. He also faked Scarborough a little bit on an eight-yard gain by Brockamani. Fake by Mitchell across the middle. C.J. Lebrack. C.J. Lebrack still going. And he's out of bounds deep in Scarborough territory. All night long, give it to Lebrack. He is racking up the receiving yards here for T.A. Ball is going to be on the 20-yard line. And let's see if they try to milk the clock here a little bit. Try to take some time off the clock and not give it back to Pawnee and Scarborough with too much time on the clock. Business at hand first, though, and that's get some points on the board and take the lead in this football game. Wait a minute, that's my phrase, business at hand. Okay, you can use it. You're a good kid. 135 on the clock, plenty of time. Brocamonte trying to get to the outside, cuts it back, short gain. Let's see, clock's still running. Thornton play comes in, they gotta move here. Calvin, they gotta move. Still holding on to that one timeout here. Like I said, we're getting very close to the fringe of Forbes' range, but I don't think TA wants to really have to focus on getting that. Pass to the outside, incomplete intended for Lebrecht down around the two. So it's gonna be Third and about seven. Wow. Yeah, if Scarborough can come up with a stop here, T is probably still going to go for it, not in his range yet. So T is going to have two opportunities to pick up seven yards. Scarborough's defense has done a really good job down the stretch of not letting T.A. take the lead in this game. Derek Medor came in with the play, replacing Grant Dow. Keek is top of the screen. Lebrec near side. Bracamonte going off the right side. Bracamonte, a pretty good gain. I think he has a first down. First down indeed, under a minute to go. Get the ball to Bracamonte. He's been, has been in a cage all night and that finally he's loose. Getting the ball down a minute to go. TA is gonna look to milk the clock here a little bit and maybe set up Forbes where he wants to be for that game winning field goal. First and goal Trojans. Pass right corner of the end zone. Touchdown Trojans! Will Mitchell! The CJ Lebrecht, I think, is I, it? I think it's Bracamonte. He's been the hero on this drive. Getting the ball, Mitchell finally goes up to him. 45 seconds to go. I'm assured T.A.'s probably gonna go for two here on this play. Try to take a six point lead. 45 seconds to go. Pony in the Scarborough offense is still very dangerous, no counting them out. I but guess TA takes the lead late on a huge touchdown hookup. And Thornton gonna call timeout. The Trojans have taken the lead, 32-28. And this side of the field is completely shocked. I couldn't see, I'm pretty sure it was Brockamonte. I think it was Brockamonte, yes. I think this is TA's first lead of the night and what a what a good time to have it, 45 seconds to go in the football game. If Scarborough wants to get back into this game, they're gonna have to, well, they're in the game. If they wanna take the lead in this game, they're gonna have to take a quick strike on this team. And Pawnee has been playing well all night. TA secondary, very young secondary, so let's see if they can come out big here. Scarborough does have that one long touchdown reception. It was Pawnee to Dunley on the hookup. 
It's a four point margin. Thorne would like to make two to make it six. We obviously want to get at least a six. You would hope to get to seven maybe, but at least now they have the four point margin. So, you know, Scarborough could not come down and win with a field goal. But again, first things first, that is to get two points and then you're gonna have to have a good kick uh, coverage. You know, I looked across to that play. My, my heart was saying touchdown. I was trying to see my eyes that they actually called it. Mitchell back to pass again, throwing end zone over the head, I think, of LeBrec. Scarborough still needs to get a touchdown here to win this football game. 45 seconds to go for Zoltan Pony and the Red Storm offense. So this kick and the kick return slash kick coverage is going to be big. Because I think Scarborough's pretty much out of timeouts. Can you see the scoreboard? They have one. They have one left. Okay. Uh, I don't. They might not actually, because they called that one on the play. They called that one on the play down there earlier. I'm not sure if they have any timeouts left. If they do, they might have one. Okay, a couple of dangerous kick returners. Let's see what they do. Coach Kiesel sending instructions in to Brady Forbes and the kick coverage team. He kicks it deep. They're going to hope to cover. I think that's Flaker down there. Flaker is going to be stood up right around the 22-yard line as Thornton stayed in their lanes. Great job by the Thornton kickoff coverage here tonight. They have given up a kickoff return in both of their previous games, but tonight it's probably the best duo back there in Flaker as well as Semi. But TA kickoff coverage doing a great job. TA is going to be in their prevent defense trying to prevent a long touchdown strike. On the tackle, they gave credit to Geekus and Bailey Cottle. Okay, Scarborough, very dangerous offensive team. Pagne takes a low snap, he scooped it again. Down the middle again, off the hands. Incomplete, the clock will stop obviously. Down to 33.4. Cody Dudley running right up the seam. One-on-one -on -one coverage there with Cam Hood. With CJ Lebrecht safety help over the top, Pawnee just out of his outstretched reach, knocked down by Cam Hood. Great job defending. I think Dudley might have a cramp more than anything. It's sort of a damp night, misty night, as you can see. Yeah, what a great high school football game, though. Both teams, again, uh, some people decide to stay at home and say, ah, I'll watch it later on uh, YouTube or. I'll see a game film somewhere. They're going to be kicking themselves. Thornton trying to finish this minor upset. Got to play some defense. Pagne throws out to the sideline. That's incomplete. It's going to be third down and 10 with 29.4 seconds. And I don't understand that play right there. It looked like Semi was running a quick out there. Say you make that catch, you get out of balance, it's eight yards. You gotta look for something down the field to get out of balance on. Semi came up a little limpy on the last play. That's time, once again, comes up on a limp. And he's Scarborough's leading receiver, so a big loss at a time like this. 29.4 seconds to go. Scarborough's gonna need something down the field and quick. Thorne Academy 32, Scarborough 28. Week number three of the football season, September 15th from Scarborough. Two, two and O teams doing battle. Pagne back to pass. He's flushed, loose ball. He picks it up and finally tackled. But you know what? A lot of seconds went off the clock. Looks like Scarborough did it that one time out. Thomas Palmer came behind and stripped the ball loose from Pagne. He picks it up, tries to create something and get out of balance. Neither of those scenarios happen. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Doesn't get out of bounds. Scarborough forced to use their last timeout. 
So they're going to have to look for something up the field and to get out of bounds because if they get a big play going up the seam, they're going to have to really hustle to get down to snap this next play off. Sophomore quarterback Will Mitchell has quite a game. Three touchdown passes according to my unofficial records. It's fourth and nine. Now Panya again did an excellent job. Low snap, he scooped it, then he got knocked out of his hand, he picked it up. But the plus for Thornton is some more seconds went off the clock. And as you said, by then he stayed in bounds and they had to use the timeout. This is a fourth down play. It's a big hole in this defense here. Panye throwing to the sideline. And they're gonna say he's out of bounds with 13 seconds, first down. Thornton coach is up with us, hoping he stayed in bounds. Still a lot of ways to go here for Scarborough. Now they start the clock. Loose ball, Panye again. Panye stepping up, throws, incomplete with five seconds left. This is gonna be the last play for Scarborough. They're gonna need a miracle here on this play. I see Will Mitchell out there playing defense just like he did last year. Yeah, last year he's the big man in center field looking to knock something down here. Five seconds even on the clock. Scarborough 32, Thorn, excuse me, Scar Thorn Academy 32, Scarborough 28. All Thorn has to do is keep somebody in the field of play. And they'll go to 3 0. Panye throws down. Incomplete. And that's it. That's it. The Thorn Academy Golden Trojans down by two touchdowns come back as you see them celebrate on the field and stun the Scarborough Red Storm by a score of 32 to 28. The Trojans 3 0 on the season, Scarborough 2 1, and everybody in the Press Herald picking this game was wrong. What a football game! Down the stretch it was, nine and a half minutes to go. Scarborough takes a two touchdown lead. Scarborough fan section was very loud. They had all the momentum on their side, but sophomore quarterback in this young core, Will Mitchell finding his favorite target, CJ Lebrecht all night long, moving up and down the field, come back from the two touchdowns and score a third to win this football game and an incredible game with definite playoff implications. Now Scarborough, looking ahead, is most likely gonna have to, have to come back down to Thornton Academy if the playoffs shape out that way. Outstanding defensive games by Ian Patrie and Cam Hood, among others. And again, we mentioned uh, Brock Amani getting that late touchdown, CJ Lebrecht, Will Mitchell, throwing three touchdown passes. And just an all around team effort as the Thornton Academy players go to the student section. They're gonna celebrate with the Thornton students here. It stayed loyal to the end, nobody left early. Again, live internet coverage of the next two home games on Munzing Media, Sports.com and Thornton Academy TV as the Trojans will take on Chevrolet on the 23rd, Bonnie Eagle homecoming on the 30th. And they're now 3-0 on the season. Scarborough, an excellent Scarborough team, all kinds of weapons. They're 2-1. They're at Massabesic on the 22nd and home to South Portland on the 29th. Your final thoughts? Cal Cristoforo. Just an incredible game by two very good teams. What it came down to was Scarborough's mistakes, false starts, fumbled snaps, really just shot themselves in the foot too many times. And when you do that, it gets a very good Trojan team. That's going to come back to bite you. Excellent po poise by Will Mitchell tonight and a great overall team win for the Trojans. Okay, hope everybody enjoyed this one on Thornton Academy Television as we tape this game on September 15th. 
from the campus of Scarborough High School, Scarborough, Maine, speaking for TATV General Manager Jeff Christenberry, our cameraman Dylan Paulette, and our color commentator Calvin Cristoforo. I'm Jim Toomey. Stay tuned for more TATV coverage throughout the season, both on the internet with Munzing Media and also on tape delay on YouTube. The final score, Thorn Academy 32, Scarborough 28. So long, everybody.